as we mentioned, I'm going to talk about neural architecture search. Um, and um, let's start. So in classical machine learning, the development, uh, let's say, life cycle or process was kind of uh, as follows, data gathering. Then uh, we had to do the feature engineering uh, in order to train a classical machine learning algor algorithm, let it be random forest, logistic regression, or, or any of those. And then we were doing kind of iteration on the hyperparameter optimization together with the selected algorithms and the given data set in order to, to get to the best results. For example, in SVM, we had to tweak and, and try different types of kernels and, and stuff like this. And when we talk about deep learning, we, we see that we, we no longer need to do the, the feature extraction phase uh, and we have only kind of data gathering, architecture selection, and hyperparameter optimization, which sometimes iterates over with the architecture selection and the hyperparameter optimization several times in a trial and error fashion until finding the best the best model that is a combination of the data and the and the architecture and the training regime. So where did the feature engineering uh, 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 where, where did you left the feature engineering in, in deep learning? And, and the, the, the interesting part is that deep learning is doing feature engineering automatically. And what is doing the feature engineering is actually the neural architecture that we have selected. So different neural architectures will be able to, to extract different features uh, for, for a given data. And that's something that we think that we don't need to do feature engineering anymore, but, but the real truth is that we need to select uh, the, the, new, the architecture in a way that will represent uh, features. So why, why we do, do we need so many neural architectures in our lives? Why can't we just use ResNet50 for everything we do <laughs> all the time? Uh, and this is probably a, a, a naive question, but let's try to understand. So we, we build models for different types of data, for, for different types of tasks. Um, and for different types of hardware. Uh, and all, in a moment, I will talk about the hardware part, uh, which also related to what Gilad uh, talked recently about the performance. But let's start with, with the connection of the model and the data. Different data requires different feature, feature extraction uh, and, and learning different things from the data. For example, there's a learning from images is, is different than learning from text, different than learning from audio. But also, uh, when we are looking at one domain, learning object extract object detection in, in one type of images is different than detecting other types of ob objects. For example, if we look for smaller objects, we'll have different neural architecture that looks for a higher resolution to extract more information from the higher resolution maps. And if we are looking for def detecting large objects, we can extract more information from the uh, lower resolution maps that uh, has some kind of larger receptive fields and, and all this kind of control, the information that we can get from the data by selecting the right model. The hardware come in where we are looking all You can't hear you. You're on time, yeah. you're on mute. The, the mute yeah, now. Kind of, I don't know. So the, the hardware get into the picture when, um, when the, the hardware also involved when we want to select a model that is efficient on a specific hardware. So uh, this is kind of bring us to, to a triangle that we need to optimize all, but usually we have the data and the hardware given, and we need, need to select the neural architecture to solve everything. And maybe we will start with formulating what is neural architecture search or what, what is the, the, the most naive or the most simple problem definition of, of doing neural architecture search. And basically it's to find a neural architecture that will best perform given the data. And, and this is kind of a hand-waving uh, definition, but we can see the, this ex equation that simply says, okay, we want to minimize the loss given the data and, and the neural architecture. When the neural architecture A is selection, selected among a, a large set of candidate or possible neural architectures, so we select A star, which is the best uh, neural architectures that we will be able to minimize this loss. Uh, and, and when we get back to the sentence at the top, we, we ask ourselves what is best perform and where we are all, all only interested in minimizing the loss or, or multi-objective uh, or, or what are the success metrics for, for our neural architecture. 
Um, also, what is given the data? Is it the training data? What about generalization? So we'll probably have kind of a train and validation, but if we'll automatically do thousands of uh, skips between training and validation to find the right architecture, maybe we'll be prone to overfitting. And the last question is, what is the training regime that we are doing all of these in? Because uh, we know that, and the hyperparameters in general, because we know that this is uh, a, a, a huge problem in deep learning, find the right learning rate optimizer and all those parameters that will let us learn the model right. So probably we'll need to add here uh, in the optimization problem, also the training regime involving learning rate and all training hyperparameters, uh, et cetera. So this is kind of an introduction for neural architecture search. And what we need in order to build a neural architecture search algorithm, we need a search space, this calligraphic A from the previous slide which should be a large and, and rich architecture self space. Typically large or, or, or standard architecture self space are, are 10 to the power of 18, which is huge. Uh, and to search in such huge search spaces, we, we also need a search technique. We need to find how to search in those uh, huge search spaces. Uh, and some of the techniques are discrete or differentiable uh, based on reinforcement learning, like, like we heard about Gilad techniques. Uh, and also the optimization objective uh, that should define what we are interested to find, optimizing only the accuracy or any some other parameters like the performance runtime at inference or stuff like this. So we'll start to, to cover a few works for neural architecture search, most of them from Google uh, as they are kind of dominating this world with the Google scale compute that they have. And we'll talk about these compute requirements uh, later. But let's start from 2017 with the first NAS for deep learning that I know, which is the, the NASNet. The main goal there was to find new state of the art for internet and, and they succeed by finding a, a, a NASNet that got to 83.1% of accuracy. They found two, two types of cells uh, that they compose deep learning models, full models based on that cells uh, manually. The cells have been found on Cypher 10, uh, data sets and, and kind of transfer to, to ImageNet on the final training. And the optimization was reinforcement learning based. Uh, the models that, that have extracted was huge and trained for a lot of time. It was something like three weeks or 50 GPUs only to train the models that are uh, the, the results of, of uh, MNASNet, of uh, NASNet, sorry. Uh, and uh, this was kind of the first result that machine created a deep learning model that outperformed any known uh, uh, deep existing deep learning architecture in terms of accuracy. Generation 1.5 was DART, differential neural architecture search, uh, a search space that is defined with learned switches. We can see the alpha one, alpha two, and alpha three that kind of compose three, three operators and, and fuse them into with some kind of a convex combination of, of three operators. So the training was kind of dual. We're training both the parameters of the network and the parameter of the architecture, these alphas. Uh, and by doing step by step uh, for the parameters of the network and parameters of the architecture, they kind of both learn both uh, together. Uh, and at the end, they, they were kind of applying uh, argmax on these alphas in order to get to get one architecture. And uh, there was a, a, so, some criticism around uh, this post process of uh, moving from uh, smooth or, or continuous uh, switches of the alphas and doing this argmax and claim that it was suboptimal. There, there's also a, a, an interesting paper by the group from Alibaba in Israel that is working on, on this approach from something like two years ago. And the next generation was the performance aware algorithms where we see the first one was a mobile NASNet called MNASNet. It was a discrete search space for models that are good for mobile devices. And when, when I'm saying good, they build kind of an optimization objective that combines both the accuracy and, and the, the latency of the, of the given device. Uh, and in this, uh, based on reinforcement learning and, and discrete search space, they were able to find a very good uh, neural architecture. In the same sense, they, they also found efficient net and, and mobile net v3. Uh, which all of them is kind of in the same year found uh, for, and this is example how efficient net is kind of finding a new frontier between the flops, the floating point operation of a given neural network and the top one accuracy 
uh, breaking state of the art performance on both of them and of course on the trade off between them. So this is kind of the performance aware that in some cases is kind of uh, approximation for the performance by optimizing the number of flops uh, like in efficient net and in some cases like in mobile NAS net it's optimizing the, the, the exact uh, uh, latency measurement on the given uh, device. Uh, so this was kind of the next generation and after that we have like the latest generation and that one of them is once for all by, by, uh, by uh, MIT uh, Song Han, uh, a large network that was trained to be uh, able to extract some smaller sub-networks in order to get some other performance characteristic based on the sub-networks. Uh, and this was very interesting because of the extreme weight sharing in the large uh, neural architecture compared to the uh, smaller uh, neural architecture that was derived in order to get the, the performance characteristic that they were interested in. Uh, and also new fast methods that presented in I ICLR in the last ICLR about uh, accuracy estimation that reduces the need for, for training the, the, all the intermediate uh, models like have done in other NAS. Uh, and this is a, a place to talk about the computational cost of neural architecture search. So for example, efficient net found in computational uh, effort that is so, something similar to 2000 GPU days. It's, it's found on TPUs, but uh, it is uh, approximated to 2000 GPU days and, and this is very significant. And today everyone is looking to methods to, to do the, the accuracy estimation of the models faster in order to reduce that need uh, for training each and every model in the, in the, during the search trajectory and, and getting faster, um, faster NAS uh, network. So let's summarize the, 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 the works that I've covered. There are some trends that we see uh, starting from exhaustive search to faster models, starting from uh, finding the best accuracy to, to looking for the, the trade off between accuracy and latency or accuracy and flops and thinking about finding efficient models and from classification to, to all tasks. We know that efficient net is also derived into efficient debt that is working on, on object detection models. Uh, so, so, and this is kind of the number of NAS papers that we see year over year, starting with um, NASNet somewhere here in 2017, and it's just increasing exponentially over time. And this, the last uh, column here is 2019. Uh, I, I don't have the, the exact number for the last two years, but it's probably much larger than, than what we see uh, now. Another trend that we see is working on what, what is called NAS bench, some benchmarks that are more focused on um, on Cypher 10 and, and some other small image net uh, uh, models and, and, and data sets. So, so in this, uh, we get better kind of results and, and better algorithms for doing NAS, but it's not clear that they are transferable to the larger scale problems like image net and other uh, large scale uh, uh, image classification models. So I I'm now going to talk about a little bit about what we do at DESI and our uh, variant of NAS. So we develop a, a, a hardware aware uh, optimization for neural architecture that kind of leverage all what we heard about NAS, but also doing it significantly faster with uh, um, optimizing the specific latency on a given hardware and it's kind of hardware agnostic and hardware optimized. So it could be run on any type of hardware. Uh, it could be um, optimized for a specific hardware, uh, but for any type of hardware. Uh, and it's kind of being able to optimize the entire efficient frontier and getting a, a model for any point in the, the trade-off between accuracy and latency. Uh, Odonax operates on top of graph compilers and other compilation and quantization method and uh, it could find a accurate, in any accuracy a slice, a, a model that is suitable and it's fast. It takes uh, approximately one GPU day in order to converge and find a model that is, uh, is uh, good. And then training, it depends on the size, of the size of the model. So if I talked about the trends, we see a, a, a NAS algorithm that is hardware aware, hardware optimized, optimizing on the given data set uh, and on the given hardware, and at the end, it's kind of uh, providing a, a full control between accuracy and latency. Here's the results that we have for, for uh, Jetson. Uh, this is what we call DesiNet Jet. 
uh, and all the other architectures that some of them also found by NAS, like MobileNet V2, V3, EfficientNet, uh, and some others. Uh, uh, so this is a, an example of what happens when we optimize specific model for a specific data set on a specific hardware. And as I said, this could be happen in one GPU uh, day per model on, on this curve. I'll be happy to, to answer any questions about uh, uh, NAS uh, and in general, uh, feel free to ask or to reach out if you're interested about learning more about NAS and Desinets.